Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time of day it is where you're at. Welcome to Collider Dailies. I'm John Alditz and I'm joined by Maggie Lovett. Maggie, how are you doing today? I am doing okay. <laughs> it is the it is the Monday. <laughs> Probably tired, I'd imagine, because there's a lot of news from yes, this weekend. And so it's probably been absolutely just crazy for you, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, we're going to get the opportunity to uh, work our way through some of that news because today we are talking all about a whole bunch of the trailers that were released at the Super Bowl. So we're going to be talking about those. Uh, and yeah, let's just go ahead and let's let's dive right into it. We're going to... Uh, now the question is, do we talk about the big one right out the gate, or do we, no. or do we hold off? Do we tease a little bit, yeah, before we dive into it? I could say something, <laughs> but yeah, I think we should just we we should we should make them wait. <laughs> okay, well, let's really quickly let's just fire through the ones that uh, were for movies that we've already seen some footage from. We've already seen some trailers or things of that nature. Uh, we got Despicable Despicable Me Four which this dropped quite a bit before the, the game started, but it basically, we just see like some minions playing around with AI generated art, which is fantastic. Uh, seeing apparently illumination uh, being one of the like great champions against AI generated art. Not exactly what I was expecting. Honestly, it was the least surprising part of last night. Illumination has always been ahead of the game. Uh, they have been one of the few animation studios like that respect their animators, respect the art. Uh, and like, obviously they're fun to make fun of because of minions. Uh, but they are, they are some of the best in the game. And today they were even making fun of Steamboat Willie. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, all hail Illumination at this point. <laughs> Uh, we got some more from The Fall Guy, which honestly, this is a movie that getting any more footage from and I'm excited for because I'm I'm on board for this film. I'm completely here for it. I'm going to be watching it as soon as possible because it just looks like so much fun. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts? Basically I that. I Gosling, so I mean, yay. This, <laughs> this version wasn't that much more like different than the first trailer they put out like a couple more shots but i'm yeah, trying to, to not it. to pay too too close attention because i feel like that's one that's going to spoil a lot in the trailers because of like how action-packed it is so i watched the first trailer and skimmed through this one and i was like it didn't seem like much new there isn't a ton new to it but still it was, as i said I'm excited. i love ryan gosling yeah any more that we get from this is just a win for me uh kung fu panda 4 of course the Kung Fu Panda franchise is big. Love Jack Black. Love this cast. So that's fun. Nothing too overly thrilling or exciting about it. Just more, basically. Uh, Quiet Place uh, Day 1. It was pretty close to the trailer that we just got last week. So it's yeah. not really a ton. There's a couple of slight differences. It's it's a spot as opposed to a full trailer. So it was only about 30 seconds, but still that again, that's a movie that I'm going, I'm going to day one. So there, yeah. this wasn't going to make or break the movie for me, in my opinion. Uh, what else did we get that we had already seen? If another like short spot, that movie looks just as weird and out there as I wanted it to. And then, of course, Inside Out 2. This one was a little bit more than what we had gotten with the teaser. We got a little bit more of a feel for the actual film from this one. So, and that's they were going to drop that after overtime. So, that was like, I was like, thanks. Thanks for that. Thanks for waiting till that late in the day. Yeah, that was one of those ones that it was like, we weren't expecting to get it because we kind of expected that all of the all of the movie stuff was going to be done by the time that that part of the game rolled around but yeah. yet here we are talking about it i do want to comment on if okay it reminds me of foster's home for imaginary friends but yeah like less good version <laughs> like i love ryan reynolds i'm gonna see it i think it looks fun but uh, I just think that we have seen imaginary friends done right. And I also think it is hilarious that at the same time that we have, if we also have imaginary, which is the Blumhouse horror film about imaginary friends. So I don't know what happened this year and why we have to. <laughs> two it's one of those, there's an, uh, there's a term for what is it? Parallel thinking. Mm -hmm. One of those sort of things where we tend to get like 
two of something like White House Down and Olympus Has Fallen. Yes. Effectively the same time. You know. Yeah. In Hollywood, where we'll have two very, very similar things. Uh, Foster's Home was a solid Cartoon Network show. It really was. And honestly, I have to agree with you. When I first saw the first uh, teaser for this, before I knew what it was, I thought it was a film adaptation of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That's so funny. Um, like The yeah. vibes. It's very similar vibes. I want to know if John Krasinski was sitting at home watching Cartoon Network reruns when he conjured up this idea. I mean, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> all right now let's get into let's get into the new ones the new stuff that dropped let's start things off with wicked yeah a film adaptation of the broadway play uh which musical. itself is an adaptation of a book right or broadway the, book musical. After the, play? the musical you know what i mean well, did the book well, come at, did the book come after the musical or did the musical come after the book which like what's the order of operations here? first okay the musical is based off the book Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. And that, of course, is based off of The Wizard of Oz because it is all about the life and times of the Wicked Witch of the West and her, like, origin, how she came to be, how she came to be green, how she came to be evil, her, like, relationship with her sister, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. I, I'm a bit of a musical theater guy. Uh, but Wicked is one that I was never huge on. Oh my god! <sighs> feel like feel like you have. I opinions. love Wicked. I I'm I'm just thinking about like the fact that I my my studio is in my my childhood bedroom, and I'm just thinking about like the times that I recreated Wicked in here with like my camcorder and like the full choreography. Uh, I love Wicked. Uh, it's I wouldn't say it's like one of my favorite musicals. My my top three is reserved for like three very specifics, but it is definitely in like my top five, top six. Um, I don't know how I feel about this version of Wicked. I'm very, I'm still very much on the fence about it. Um, what is about it has left you unsure? There is, 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 this is, is it... uh, there is maybe a, uh, and this is maybe a, like a trend throughout movies. Uh, we are rapidly losing color. This is actually a thing that is actually being studied out, outside of like film and media and all of that. But like in real life, like you even see it in architecture. You have all of these like beige facades. We used to have like colorful bright houses and like colorful paint, like bright paints and sides. And now people are like beige paradise. And some of the stuff in this trailer was slightly off-putting because you have like the actual Wizard of Oz vibes and the shots and like all of this stuff. And it's bland and beigey and like the the colors don't pop the way that they wizard of oz does and wizard of oz was such like a technological advancement because that was like the first big like technicolor and you have all of the stuff and then you to have this movie that has so much you know technology to seize upon and it just seemed rather drab which is unfortunate uh and i hope maybe that's just the way it looks in trailers because it's still in like the editing process and like color correction and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of reservations about this. I also think splitting it into two parts um, is definitely a choice. Um, <laughs> so, and yeah, so I'm, I'm holding my reservations. I'm also nervous about them cutting kind of key songs and key moments and things like that. And I'm, I do hope that if we do this like two part, Thing that maybe that means that they're not cutting a lot of stuff but yeah i have a lot of reservations about this as somebody who like really loves the the stage production well you know i'm really Again. excited about Jonathan bailey is fiero though i was really sad that we only got one shot of him in it um because there was that leak trailer a few months back where he was like front and center and then he was not front and center in this trailer um, yeah maybe if they gave me more fiero i I would have been more hype. <laughs> uh, Jeremy Miller pointing out that the CGI looks a little bit rough. Uh, yeah, 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 it does. But when it comes to trailers, I'm it's still early. Yeah, I like that's one of those things where I don't, especially on a first trailer, I don't usually tend to judge too hard on the yeah. CGI. That's why Although I, that means I'll be slightly reserved. Like... Yeah. That being said, the nowadays, like the last few years. It has really seemed like, especially on the bigger budget films, uh, that the CGI that we get in the first trailer winds up being the CGI that we get in the final film. 
which is not a great trend that I'm a big fan of. That being said, I am a big fan of maybe letting VFX teams take a break. Um, yeah. But I don't know. It's a it's a whole complicated situation that uh, is not great all around. <laughs> yeah, I'm holding uh, I'm holding back full reservations until we get like trailer two, and then if trailer yeah. two still feels weird, I might have stronger opinions. I mean, we'll see. Also, uh, I think it's, exciting, it's a musical still, guys. We know we're yeah, musical. like. I like, feel like though, if you if you know honestly, a musical anything <laughs> about Wicked. You you know it's a musical. Yeah, but I, I just still think it's a weird trend, especially since that leaked trailer that came out a few months ago had the singing in it. And I just want to know where that trailer went because that looked good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I noticed Wicked and Moana 2 open on the same day, which we go see first. Wicked. Uh, probably Moana 2. Again, I don't really have like a strong connection or opinion on Wicked as a piece so i don't know that's just the way that i'm gonna go i feel like disney is a safer bet for me uh yeah so that answers that let's move on to the next trailer that's kingdom of the planet of the apes we're gonna talk about this one next because it segues into the next one after that so this is what we're gonna go with uh so yeah it is the fourth film in the planet of the apes reboot franchise which started with rise of the planet of the apes went through like war for the planet of the apes and all that stuff uh yeah it looks like a planet of the apes film i'll be yep. honest i wasn't super blown away by this i do appreciate that they're getting significantly close i feel like this one was the biggest leap towards the the situation that the Planet of the Apes was in in the original film where they're like, you know, hunting down and enslaving humans and humans are very primal and uh, less developed. Uh, so I appreciate that just as a like lore nerd because yeah. this this entire reboot franchise was was billed as this is the this is the history leading up to the Planet of the Apes that, you know. And so now we're finally kind of getting a lot closer to that, which I appreciate outside of that. I don't have super strong opinions on this. I have done. I'm not a Planet of the Apes girly. So I grew up with the original series and I remember seeing the Tim Burton uh, film in theaters as a kid. I have the uh, PlayStation 1 adaptation of that film. This is a terrible game. Don't play this game. Uh, so I have some opinions on Planet of the Apes. This one, it looks like more of the same. I think that's the thing that gets me is that it, it doesn't seem like it's too outside of what the rest of the films in this franchise have done, which, yeah, okay, I guess it's kind of to be expected, but I don't know. I kind of wanted something a little bit fresher from it, but I don't know. It'll probably be a fun movie. I'm yeah. not going to, I'm not going to knock it first trailer. Maybe the second trailer will give me a little bit more, but you know, it is what it is. Got, got it. Anything, anything at all for kingdom of the planet of the apes? Nah. All right. That's fair. Trailers are sometimes hard to have like really yeah. form deep opinions on. I mean, especially when you don't generally care that much about the properties. <laughs> Like, I appreciate the Planet of the Apes for, like, their technological advances and, like, that mocap stuff is, like, incredible, next level, you know, awe-inspiring, yada, yada. Uh, but it's just, it feels like a story that keeps being told, and I don't know if there's a lot that you can necessarily do different. So I'm I'm curious to see if this, you know, rewrites the the tale or not, but happy for the Planet of the Apes people. As long as we don't see an ape kissing a human, it should be a good movie, according I to Jeremy Miller. That. <laughs> uh, I will point this out, that the first film in the franchise had a human kissing an ape. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because Charlton Heston does kiss... Uh, oh, why am I spacing on the female ape's name? Yeah, I don't remember her name either. But yeah, no. Yeah, it's it's just a quick that. peck at the end of the film, but it doesn't really count. But I get what you're saying, Jeremy. Uh, I don't foresee that happening. Especially because this franchise, this version of the series, the apes are much more ape than they are like anthropomorphic. Uh, so 
I think that that would just weird out literally everybody on the planet if that happens. The lot of them. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not gonna like be too worried about that personally. Uh, let's move on to another something that is at least monkey themed. Uh, and one of the one of the few like non franchise trailers that we're going to talk about today, and that is Monkey Man, an action thriller written, directing, and or directed by and starring Dev Patel. Uh, with this being his directorial debut, this looks interesting. I don't know really how to like I like I don't know what to take from this trailer, but it definitely looks like it's gonna be interesting <laughs> it looks really fun yeah it i like dev patel i think that he is he's quite talented as a performer uh i'm gonna reserve any judgment as far as his directing obviously until i see the full film but i can say from the trailer that it looks visually appealing it certainly looks like something that is gonna be fun at the very yeah. least um so you know yeah, I'm really excited that it's not going to be a streaming movie now and that, you know, it's actually going to get a theatrical release, which I think this kind of movie kind of warrants just based off the visuals that we've seen so far. Yeah, um, yeah I love Dev Patel. I've loved Dev Patel since he was in Skins. Uh, so some of you have just now jumped on the bandwagon for Dev Patel while some of us have been here since the beginning. Oh, my God. Are you gatekeeping? I am going to gatekeep the Dev Patel, Patel fandom. <laughs> Come on now. I thought that we when we had our long talk about fandom, we we specifically like spoke out against gatekeeping. I'm just saying if you didn't love Dev Patel when he looked like a dweeb, you You're don't not a true fan. You don't get to love him now that he is a Hollywood stud. I'm just saying. <laughs> I do not. Uh, I I feel like I should say that Maggie's opinions do not reflect the opinions of of this show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start using that whenever you have bad opinions, John. So just now that you've taken you know those worms out of that can, you're in for <laughs> you're in for it now. <laughs> Sam Red also uh, thought it was interesting that Peel saved Monkey Man yeah. from being a streaming movie. That alone gives me faith that it's going to be probably pretty decent. Yeah. Um, just because like I can, I can trust his, his judgment on a film. And if he, if he thinks it's good enough to not just be something streaming on what platform was it going to stream on? I can't remember. Netflix, I think. Yeah. Then it's probably something decently worthwhile. Uh, moving on to, I guess the only one that we have left to talk about is the big one, right? The Mark with the mouth. One? Oh, no, wait, we have one more before we get to the big one. Twisters. Oh yeah. This this trailer got me far more hyped than I was anticipating it getting me. I loved the 1996 film with Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt. It is like that is a that is one of my comfort films. People talk about like movies that they can watch over and over and over again. Twister is a weird is a weird comfort film for me. I know I understand there are some people who are like that introduction where like the little girl's dad gets sucked up into the twister is like traumatizing for some people. And oh, yeah, that's that not is... what traumatized me. What was what was the part that traumatized the barn you? With all of the oh uh, the saw blades. Yeah, the saw blades. That I have nightmares about that still to this day. And like whenever I've been inside of a building that has a lot of stuff like that in it, I'm like, well, this is the end of me. This is like my final destination. Here's um, the thing: you also you also live in a place where like twisters are a possibility right yeah. see the states the states that i have lived in in my life i've lived in several states i think the only one where twisters were an actual possibility was texas yeah every other state that i've lived in like we don't get we yeah. don't get them I have the so like i'm not concerned about it with perry on here because she loves like the twister thing and i was like yeah it's, it's not as fan like fun when that's like an actual reality for you uh i will say though this trailer did make me want to watch this movie in a way that I previously didn't want to. And it's specifically because it still very much carries the vibe of the original Twister. And it feels like an Amblin film. I know like we get a lot of things that are like, oh, this feels like an A24 film and all of that. But like, there's a degree of comfort that comes from Amblin films 
that I don't see in a lot of other film companies making. And I have the same feeling about focus features. Um, yeah. Whenever I know that a film is focus features, I know I'm getting a very specific type of film. And I think that Amblin has that same vibe to it. And I was really relieved to see that it felt like that film still, even yeah. though we have all of this new like GoPros and drones and upgraded like technology and stuff, but it still possessed that like very specific feeling that you don't necessarily get in films anymore. Yeah, I think that it 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 very much carries the same vibe as the original. Like it feels it feels like the 90s disaster film that we all kind of want it to be. I will say that I I called it is what I'm going to say because when the news dropped that this was going to be standalone and it wasn't going to be connected to the original film, I was like, "Listen, I feel like there's going to at least be an appearance of the of the device MacGuffin from the first film." I was like, "That would make sense for them to just work that in some way." And guess what? It was it was there. It's there. It's in the film. So there's there's at least one connection to the original. Uh, it also I'd, like I also wouldn't be surprised if somebody name drops Bill Paxton's character or Helen Hunt's character or any of those characters. Just name drop them. I feel like that's that's an easy enough thing to do. We don't need like the the woman to be Bill Paxton's daughter, all that sort of stuff, which is what the original rumor was. We didn't need that, but. Some small connections, I think, would be nice. I can tell you, as someone who lives in Oklahoma, the meteorologist I watched are hyped about the movie, and the original is their favorite movie. Yeah, uh, well, I meteorologist would be excited about a weather-related movie. They're finally getting their day; they can talk <laughs> about something. <laughs> yeah, I. It's yeah. I I actually I know a couple meteorologists, and yeah, I think all around, most people in that field love. They Twister love disaster movies. Like, because I remember when I was working at a TV station, a couple of the meteorologists that I talked to had nothing but fantastic things to say about Twister. Yeah, uh, I mean, how often, that's such a niche career field. Like, how often do you get, like, a pop culture thing where you can sit down at the dinner table and be like, well, okay, so these are how they got things right. Let's talk about the science of cyclones. Be like, actually, they got this cloud type wrong. I mean, that's, like, that's exactly what you want. <laughs> Yeah. The, and meteorologists don't get that very often. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just I, like, this is a movie that I am hyped for, not just because of the original um, and just being surprised by how long it's taken for us to get a sequel, yeah. but also just because it looks like a lot of fun and the cast is super solid. Uh, Glenn Powell is one of those people that I didn't think I was going to enjoy nearly as much as I have found myself enjoying over his last few films. So, you know, I'm on board for it. Uh, real quick, Dragon Trainer 300, which team were you rooting for? Uh, so here's the funny thing about that. I don't give a single crap about sports. I'm one of those <laughs> guys. So I was not rooting for any team in specific. I was just like, yay, go, go red team. I was rooting funny for it to end. <laughs> Uh, were we both the, the sort of people watching for the trailers? Yeah, I mean, I I only watch the Super Bowl because I have to do it for my job. I would mm -hmm. rather do just about anything else. In fact, I I did put on Cloverfield Paradox afterwards, so <laughs> I did treat myself for the suffering that I endured last night. Uh, I so I actually I actually didn't watch the game. I watched everything on Twitter as it was coming. I watched it via Twitter. Well, I was driving during it because uh, remember on Friday how I mentioned that I was going to be uh, coming to you live from my mom's sewing yeah, room. I noticed well, that. Notice that I'm not in my mom's yeah. sewing room. Uh, I decided to come home early yesterday because everything was dropping and I was like, oh, there's going to be work to do. So I, you know, hopped in my car and drove the four hours from my parents' place to here. Uh, did you watch Usher's Halftime? <laughs> I... Am I, I will throw this out there. The the only period in time when I cared about the halftime show was those few years following the Janet Jackson situation where it was all like aging old classic rock stars because they were trying to play it safe. Yeah. Because that's my jam. I don't well, really care about Usher. You do realize, John, Usher playing is a sign of the times. We are now 
into the aging musicians from our glory days. Yeah, I did. I, like that did hit me a little bit where I was like, wait, Usher, really? He's yeah, like, no. And that was, was I saw irrelevant. It. And then I was like, oh, it's because like, yeah, we're the age group classic now. music for that. Yeah, that's, that's classic. That is our classic music. Um, And I, that was something I saw a tweet last night. I don't remember who tweeted it, but it was like, their one good part of growing older is that the halftime shows are now perfect for me. <laughs> like, because we're now that demographic. Sobering <laughs> thoughts. Is what it is. Uh, okay, so moving on to the big one, the one that got everyone a buzzing, the one that got everyone a talk, and the one that I know got Maggie excited. Uh, it's of course the Deadpool 3 trailer, or should mm -hmm. I? Should I say Deadpool and Wolverine, uh, which is the official title of the film? Uh, here's the thing: this title, this title, and the and the like, the big hit at the end of the trailer. As soon as I saw them, my my first thought was, "Man, I really wish I didn't know Wolverine was in this movie for that." <laughs> yeah, truly. Uh, that, was, uh, that was what was so funny was there were so many people being like i can't believe they didn't show us wolverine and they're like of course they didn't show you wolverine because not everybody's chronically online there are swaths of people who just found out that wolverine is in this movie watching the, the super bowl last night like honestly i think that it was of the trailer's benefit that they didn't show 100%. wolverine because like it is still worth remembering this is even though his name is in the title and everything this is still deadpool's movie and i feel like if they showed a bunch of wolverine in the trailer all it would have served to have done is taken all attention away from deadpool so that's where i kind of stand on that i think that we got the perfect amount of wolverine for the first trailer i feel like if we get a second trailer which we're pretty close to the film being in july so it wouldn't surprise me if we get like we'll get like small teasers here or there but i wouldn't we'll surprise me if we don't get a second trailer we'll get a second trailer in may yeah we'll that's probably if time. we do i think that'll be a safe bet but i think that one we're gonna see wolverine we're gonna see more wolverine in it um as well as that's probably the one where we'll get some like multiverse character drops if they're if the rumors and everything well, we, were we true. did kind of get multiverse character hints last well night. yeah okay uh we do have some images from the trailer that we're gonna be showing up here on screen for instance we have the the happy birthday wade cake with a picture of uh all of his friends draw particular attention to blind owl's uh buddy back there with the giant biker beard mm -hmm. uh the only character in this picture that i actually do not recognize <laughs> <laughs> so i'm assuming that that is a new character uh, I, I hope that it's, I hope that it's like a, a boyfriend for blind owl, because I think the blind owl deserves that, <laughs> but that is just a fantastic that I, I feel like that was a great opening, a yeah. great opening because it was like, Oh, so like peaceful and wholesome. And you're like trying to remember that this is a Deadpool movie and why are we being so wholesome? And then, uh, yeah. It it deadpools up very quickly with a line that I'm not going to repeat here because YouTube, but it very much set the tone that, yes, this is going to be an R-rated MCU film. This is going to be a more adult, more mature MCU film, which I'm here for. Uh, Maggie, what about this trailer stood out the most to you? What about was, this trailer got you the most hyped? Okay, so I was really excited that Pyro is back um like that was i actually so i didn't realize that was pyro until just before the show and um, i was like oh crap that's pyro literally the scream that i screamed when i saw him i was so excited so i love the x-men movies like more than life uh like that came out 24 years ago which is insane but those movies were like such a crucial part of my like <laughs> growing older uh I like have such a fondness for every single character in those movies. And I know some people don't like them, whatever you have bad taste. Um, I love them so much and I'm just really excited to see him back and like pay a little homage to that as well. Like I, I really hope that it also means that we might see other characters from X-Men that like we haven't had spoiled for us. Cause that one was like a complete surprise for me. Um, I also love the TVA stuff. I, that really truly surprised me. Cause I think I had seen some, some spoiler slash rumor slash speculation about like how the multiverse stuff was going to happen in this and none of that had the tva in it so that was a really fun surprise and i think 
it's a good step forward that like Loki and all of that has just happened so that that's still really fresh in people's minds, like what the TVA is and all of that. So I think that's a smart play for Marvel. Um, and there was also just a bunch of other little like cameo things and Easter eggs in that trailer that I'm really excited for, like the comic on the, um, the, the desert sand um, in the last bit, um, what looked like maybe Madripoor. Uh, like lots of little things that made me really excited. Also him watching the clips from the movies <laughs> and saluting Captain America. You notice that, uh, that those clips really liked Age of Ultron because They're most really of those clips were from Age, Age of Ultron. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of half expecting them to make a joke about that. I feel <laughs> about like it all being from one film. Uh, so what do you think the over under with all the TVA stuff uh, for us getting an Owen Wilson cameo? Because I don't feel like he, I don't feel like Morbius is going to be like a big, like I don't think the Morbius is going to be a big part of the film because obviously Deadpool is going to be uh, hanging out with Paradox. That's his TVA agent of choice. Uh, but what do you think the chances of us getting that cameo are? Considering he's the least uh, exciting character from that show, I hope it doesn't happen. So that's my over under. Who would you um, want to see a cameo from? Um, obviously Loki or Sylvie. Um, those I don't those those two I think are the least likely to get a cameo. Just because of the way that season two ended, I don't we're not getting Loki. I don't I feel that. We could get Sylvie, a version maybe. Of Loki. Hello, version of Loki. Mm, I don't know, maybe. I could I could see the crocodile being in like in the TVA. Yeah. But you know, maybe in like a like in a tank or something. It's like, oh yeah, it's that's Loki, <laughs> and it's like okay. Uh, but I don't know. I don't think that those two are very likely personally, just because of the way the season two ended. I just think that Deadpool would like alligator Loki. He probably would. He would be. I don't think that he would really understand the Loki part, but you know, it's nice to have a proper commentary on MCU, especially since it's weakest part of the fandom right now. Uh. Yeah. So, okay. The whole idea that, that Deadpool and Wolverine is going to save the MCU. After seeing this trailer, where do you stand on it? Um, I think it would take a lot more than one good movie to save it right now. See, I am Simply I'm because not they, as... Like, they need to get where they're going. Just yeah. because you do one good... Like, that's... That's been the issue that I've had with Marvel is that they do one thing good and then they think that's the only thing they should go after and then that causes everything else to kind of crumble. It's And it's it's not just Marvel. It's a trend with all the studios. People see like, oh, this one thing did really well for us. Let's just do everything there and then like forget about all the other stuff. And I don't want that to be the trend that just because one thing does well, you should abandon all of your, your other plans because um, I think that sets a really unfortunate precedent. I think, so here's the thing. The thing that gives me, first of all, I'm not as doom and gloom about the MCU as some people. I don't think that it is in as bad a state as some folks say. I don't think it's in a great state, for sure. That it's having some serious issues. But what gives me the most faith that this movie is going to be, is going to signal kind of the start of a change of direction in a more positive way would be probably the fact that it's the only 2024 MCU film. Yeah. For me, that is the thing that gives me confidence that maybe this is the start of a writing the course on the ship kind of situation. Uh, so I'm still holding out my feelings about where Marvel's going once we have more about Daredevil. Because, <laughs> like, that series. That is, is the big one for you. A lot of, yeah, it's where a lot of my feelings are like hinging on what, where things are going. Uh, like I've already made peace with the fact that I'm probably never seeing Zemo again. Like I've made peace with that. Um, Deadpool could do a lot for me if you just take a clip of him um, in the TV thing. <laughs> like they'll they'll give me so much, um, but I'm not expecting that. So like now I've just hinged all of my hopes and dreams upon um, the future of Karen Page's existence. So um, yeah, I really know how to pick my hyperfixations in Marvel because I get nothing. I am served crumbs. That's uh, because you you keep hyperfixating on like the oddest people to hyperfixate on. Yeah, I Zemo mean, I at least get Karen Page. Like, uh, uh, again, can I get Wolf, Rogue? Wolf. 
here, if I really want to start hyper fixating on an X-Men character, Rogue was my hyper fixation for like a good 10 years. So I could see us getting some Rogue in this. If she shows up, I might see what, even What next has week. Anna Paquin been doing? She's been working. Has she? Yeah. I haven't seen her personally. Okay, well, follow doing? her on Instagram. You'll see she's booked and busy, and so is her husband, Steven. True blood. And again, there's my connection back to Deborah Ann Wall because she was on True Blood with them. <laughs> All of my hyperfixations are connected. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Anna Paquin showing up with a 90s look would be great. I think if she was going to show up, I think that she would probably have a far more comic accurate look. Uh, yeah, we're going to flash up. We're going to flash up your, your comment with your typo. That's that's how we're gonna do that there, Don Line dude. <laughs> the voice of God has decreed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they're gonna have Channing Tatum as a meta gambit since he was never actually gambit. That I, would I be that. this is I, actually the best movie for that to happen in. I feel like Channing Tatum would be weirdly okay with that. Oh, absolutely. You I know, feel he, like I feel like you he would know be cool he's sad it. he never got to play. Oh, him. Yeah. Well, he's been he's been carrying the torch harder than anybody else. So, yeah, I could see that. I think that that could be a possibility, but that's getting into speculating about the whole multiversal character appearances and things like that, which uh, I think we're going to probably do an entire episode on that when we get Look, closer and closer. I hate cameos. I think they derail a movie, but if there's anything that could be just 100% wall to wall cameos, it's Deadpool. And I would not complain once about it because that's just the tone. Yeah. I feel like this movie, uh, this movie is either going to be a cameo fest or it's going to have no cameos. Like, I feel like that is the way it's going to go. Um, it's either going to be cameos every five seconds or it's going to be absolutely none. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, I'm totally fine with. I think either way to go with that would be fantastic. I'm just excited to see how they're looping Deadpool into the MCU proper, how we're going to get him onto the main the main timeline uh the sacred timeline uh so yeah it's gonna be pretty excited do you have any closing thoughts on this trailer maggie i'm excited that marvel is embracing the merc with the mouth uh and that even the marketing is naughty <laughs> like yeah, you are you are way way excited about like the tagline for the trailer I and am. just all of the blood. I will, I will say, I appreciate for me, I appreciate just how bloody this trailer was. If you look at that, yeah. show, that's, that's a There's lot. Nothing of blood. I love more than a man covered in blood. Deadpool <laughs> is a dream. It is a good thing. He wore his red pants. Um, yeah. I mean, he's, he's thinking about stains. Let's talk about like his, his suit looks way more saturated. It looks so good. Than, than it did. This movie has so much color in it. I think that was another thing that I was like so excited about watching this is that this movie is so bright. It's so vibrant. Everybody's the, costumes are bright. It's so like it's it's a revelation after seeing like so many trailers that are so like saturated and dead feeling. It's it's the an, it's the antithesis to the wicked trailer, is what you're saying. Absolutely. Look, <laughs> the the death of colors is a very big concern of mine. Uh and it's never more apparent than when you're watching movies these days and TV shows when like, it doesn't seem like they have a lighting budget. So yeah. this makes me excited because everything's so bright. Everything's so visible. I didn't have to adjust any clips. I could just post them and it's like good to go. Cause it's so bright and vibrant. And I love that. It is pretty brilliant. Big, big fan of it. More double on Dodger taglines, please. <laughs> it's fun. I'm not going to, not going to knock it. It's a lot of fun. I'm not as excited by it as, you know maggie apparently is uh yeah all right well that's where we're that's where we're gonna end things we've gone way long on this episode uh which i mean i kind of expected i i felt like if any episode was gonna be long it was gonna be this one but uh we're gonna we're gonna bring it into a close maggie do you have anything uh anything coming down the pipeline that you want to plug i do uh, I have interviews dropping in the next couple of days with the cast of the new look, including a couple breakouts with Ben Mendelsohn and Maisie Williams. I am doing the Bad Batch Junket tonight. So if you are a, a batcher, uh, keep your eye out on Clatter.com for those interviews to be dropping in the next couple of days, probably towards the end of the week and next week as we gear up for the actual you know, premiere of the series. Uh, and then I have a couple other ones that I'll talk about later in the week. 
fantastic stuff. So get a, so be sure to pay attention to Collider.com for those. Also, while you're over on Collider.com, be sure to check out our premium video stuff. Basically, anytime that you see an article uh, thumbnail with a play button in the corner, that means there is a video element to it, uh, which is stuff that a whole bunch of us work real hard on. And, uh, you know, th the opinions on things that I have seen online, the reactions to that video content have been positive. So, you know, let's just uh, give them a look. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow. I believe it is Perry and tentatively Steve. Uh, so, yeah, be sure to tune in for that. Same bad time, same bad place. Uh, until then, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening, and we'll see you next time.